Hi guys, welcome to our next podcast. Uh, this week's theme is a trisomy pregnancy. Um, I'm Sonia, I'm the communications officer for SOF UK and I'm joined with Kate Hart, who's currently 36 weeks pregnant with a trisomy 18 baby. Welcome Kate, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your experience. Morning Sonia, thank you. No problem, how are you feeling at the moment? I'm feeling good, thank you. We had uh, another appointment yesterday and we actually had some good news coming from that. So I'm a bit more upbeat this morning than uh, perhaps after some of the other appointments we've had lately. Um, and that good news is that she's actually grown more than we've expected. So we were really, really pleased to hear about how well she's grown. So oh, brilliant. I'm yeah, feeling positive today. And that's so important because as we know, uh, the trisomy babies, the, the, their length and their growth is, is one of the most important factors and all we've got to rely on. Well, if you do get a diagnosis in pregnancy exactly. um, to see how healthy they are. So that's a really good sign. Yeah. So j just take us back to the beginning when you found out about your diagnosis. Um, so we went for the, well, I went for the 12 week scan because unfortunately it was um, under COVID times. So I had oh, yeah. to attend the scan on my own. And I was just waiting to hear that heartbeat. And as soon as I heard the heartbeat, I felt relieved. Soon realized that, you know, something was up when the sonographer was taking a long time and I mean, I, and yeah, so it was a difficult one to hear that there was too much fluid and the measurement that they were looking at was not quite right. And I just thought to myself, oh, how am I going to tell my husband this? It's just, I don't want to, how I just, yeah, how am I going to communicate this with him? And, you know, we're apart now. Do I wait till, till I get home? Or, yeah, it was mm. really, it was a tough appointment to have on my own. And there was obviously a bit of wait time. So, yeah, that day was not a great day. So did they tell you on that appointment it was trisomy or no. just that there was something <clears throat> wrong? Yeah, they just said that the marker, the fluid behind her neck was probably double what it should have been for okay. um, a normal uh, baby or normal pregnancy and um, I tried to say well what you know what could it mean and they the lady was really hesitant to to really say anything but she said it could be something like down syndrome or, or one of the other trisomies and then because I'd had a previous section I met with a consultant straight after and I tried to also ask her a few more questions but they basically said you will you will be um, seen by somebody in a fetal medicine department will get you that appointment as soon as possible and they will be able to give you more answers and we're very fortunate that we did get an appointment for the very next day and um, again unfortunately I attended on my own yeah at a different hospital that the doctor looked for about at least 20 minutes in great detail at our, at our baby and then um, met with me and the specialist midwife afterwards and just explained what she'd found and what it could mean and what it might mean and offered me the options of further testing yeah I knew I, I wanted to know more and wanted to understand what was going on so we tentatively penciled in a CVS procedure for I think I think this was now the Wednesday and for the Friday we had uh, booked the procedure and yeah they were they were fantastic they were very caring and very um, kind about everything. They gave us some sort of literature to read and they pointed us in, in the direction of soft. And um, there was a, another organization about making decisions. Um, I can't recall what, what they called, but yeah, um, just some stuff to read up on. And then again, unfortunately, I had to attend the CVS on my own, which is not nice. I mean, yeah. it's you an invasive. At that time yeah. as well, don't you? It's an invasive, very uncomfortable procedure. I mean, it wasn't wasn't the worst, but um, it would have been great to have my husband there. Yeah, of course. And then I kind of knew already that day that they wouldn't, because they hope to give you rapid results in something like three days or something. But unfortunately, they didn't get enough of a sample to give the rapid results. So we needed to wait close to 10 days or two weeks. When I got that call to say, unfortunately, we didn't get enough sample, I kind of already expected it. And then the next step in the journey was... We got the results of the blood tests that are done at 12 weeks and those showed very high markers and very high chance that it was a one in two chance of trisomy 13 or 18 and a one in five chance of down syndrome so we more or less knew that you know this is a very serious situation we just were waiting to find out which 
diagnosis was for us. And then, yeah, they were excellent at as soon as, as soon as they got the results, they got in touch and they told us that um, it was trisomy 18. It was full trisomy 18 because that was one of our questions. And mm-hmm. um, you start hanging your hopes on strange things like mosaic, I suppose, Down syndrome. Did you do some, of, did you do some research while oh, you yeah. were waiting then? Yeah, we did plenty of research and, you know, we were also then really hoping and praying that maybe it would be a healthy down syndrome baby you know because from what we understand they have a better prognosis but and then yeah they offered us the option to know if it was a boy or girl and we we did want to know and so they confirmed we were expecting a little girl but yeah so I suppose it was then the the shock and coming to terms with it all my husband came around and sort of accepted it and and processed it all a lot faster than I did so that Mm. was a bit of a challenge because I was still sort of in the not quite denial but yeah, I hadn't accepted it um, as quickly as him. So it was difficult to be on different pages. And he was reading up a lot more and looking into stories. And I was just not ready to do that. I was just not there. Yeah, um, I even remember attending a community midwife appointment. And she asked if we wanted to listen to the heartbeat. And I was, I wanted to listen, but I was also wondering if there would be a heartbeat and how I'd feel about that because you know if it wasn't a heartbeat maybe it would have saved us a lot of pain and and a really difficult journey we also were speaking a lot about whether we wanted to continue with the pregnancy or not and yeah we we fairly soon decided that we did want to continue and that you know this was a gift this child is a gift no matter you know what's what's going on so by the time we went for our 16 week scan we could tell them conclusively that we did want to continue um so that helped the medical team sort of know how to progress from there and how to deal with us and yeah unfortunately she was very regularly at that appointment so it was very difficult to get measurements and get a clear picture of what was going on Mm. so we started to see some of the anomalies creeping in um, but they said because she was still so small, just at that gestation, they all are, we needed to wait for the 20 week scan. And then by the 20 week scan, they saw everything that they, they needed to see and they'd measured everything that they needed to measure. So we had the full picture of what was going on with our daughter. And funny enough, I suppose with a bit of time, by that stage, we, although we'd done a lot of research and although they were putting names and conditions they were telling us about all these conditions we didn't overly research them at that point because we thought well this is it is what it is she's got this and knowing the ins and outs of what the condition means and stuff like the heart condition for example the the anomalies with the brain is not going to change anything so we've kind of just accepted that um those are the issues there and we've just um been grateful for the fact that maybe she doesn't have other, still... other conditions yeah, yeah. and, and we... she's still surviving so exactly. you know so lucky to hold on to her for so long because probably around the middle of the pregnancy there was one or two maybe moments where we thought oh what's going on here is this maybe us losing her mm. and certainly in the middle of the pregnancy there was always that mixed feeling of well if it was again this would be saving us and maybe saving her from suffering and you know although it would be sad to lose her yeah yeah yeah, mixed feelings and then but then at the same time you are terrified to lose her because you know we would love to meet her and so yeah it's been a journey Mm. (laughs) a lot of um different feelings along the way and different fears and, and things so yeah it's good that you both your you and your partner are both on the same page and you need the support around you as much as you can I know you're from South Africa so your yeah. family aren't here yet or um... well my, my parents are here now thank goodness they oh been brilliant with us about two weeks and they were self-isolating for two weeks before that in this yeah. time but um yeah ordinarily it's just the two of us um so we, we've had fantastic support from our friends here we do have a bit of extended family in the country who've also um, offered to help and come you know do whatever they can because we've got a, a son who'll be three in December so he's obviously top of mind as well um, yeah. with all of this that we're going through. But um, yeah, just to go back to your point about being on the same page, we haven't always been on the same page. Um, the next yeah. sort of hurdle for us was the mode of delivery. Yeah, that was a bit of a, not contentious issue, but we were both basically in very different camps about how we felt that she should be delivered, given the risks and given just the whole circumstances. But we also have to consider if 
future pregnancies or future children that we may want. Um, so I'm pleased to say we now are on the same page, but it would <laughs> always. Um, a lot of people might say, well, it's my body, my baby, but this is his baby as well. And he's... Oh, 100%. You know, yeah. You, can't, uh, you know, you can't just say, well, sorry, I'm making this decision. It's got nothing to do with you because that's not how it is. So that's been a challenge. But like I said, we happily on the same page now. I think, and also in, in these situations, there is no right decision. So it doesn't make it an easy one. So that's what makes it harder to decide yeah. what to do because whatever your partner wants and you want, no one's wrong in it. And no, no. it's just because you don't know what outcome would be better. If you knew that, then you would go down that path, right? Exactly. There's so yeah. many unknowns. That's been something we've really, really struggled with. There's just nobody can tell us how it's going to be, how it's going to go, when she's going to arrive, yeah. how, long, how long she's going to live, what she'll weigh. There's just, they can't answer anything. And it's just been really really tricky to plan anything or to prepare yourself you just don't know how to prepare you know are we preparing to lose her in pregnancy are we preparing to lose her during labor or will she you know pass away after a few days with us we just have no idea and it's just yeah that unknown has been probably the hardest thing um, oh absolutely yeah so what what did you both decide on what's the delivery that you're both comfortable with um we've decided to proceed with a natural birth but she is breech, which is quite common with these babies. And um, I've researched a bit about that. And also the fact that she's a girl, the fact that she's small, there's a few factors that point to that, but the hospital's happy for me to proceed with natural labor. However, mm -hmm. um, because of my previous C-section, if she goes to 40 weeks, they would like to, um, we've booked an elective C-section um, okay. because there's risks associated with my scar that um, would prevent me going overdue. Mm -hmm. So we've got a end date, which is helpful in a way. We know she'll be here by X date. And yeah. so there's a, <clears throat> it's not just going to continue. And that yeah. end date has kind of been taken out. So that's that's been quite helpful in a way. So yes, that's, that's what we've how, how generally is, has your care been during your pregnancy? It sounds quite positive from the hospital side. Yeah, we have really um, couldn't say a bad word about um, the hospital and the staff. Um, we've been supported by the same consultant throughout mm. so that's really great to see the same person and then we have also had access to a bereavement midwife which sounds horrible but she's basically like a counsellor and yeah. I've had almost a weekly chat with her over the phone and she's helping with the birth plan and she's helped with just small admin type things like following appointments following up appointment details and things like that so yeah and and we found everyone to be very fair and caring and nobody said anything that we felt is offensive or yeah. hurtful or anything like that. So they've mm -hmm. all been very, from the get-go, they said that um, it's our decision and they'll not judge either way, whatever choices we make. Um, they'll just help to guide us and provide the information that will allow us to make those decisions. Yeah. Um, and then we've also been put in touch with a hospice in our area um, which has also been fantastic and they've offered a lot of support, especially for our son, because, you know, as much as we're concerned about our daughter, we're also concerned how all of this is going to impact on our son and how we're going to explain this to him, being so small. And they How old is he? Uh, he'll be three in December, so... Okay. Yeah. He's, he's still... He's, he's at the age where he'd be aware, though. Oh, 100%. Yeah, he knows yeah. that there's a baby coming and... And he talks to my tummy and he sings to her. And, uh, you know, now that we've started bringing all the baby gear out again, the car seats in the car and the Moses basket in the bedroom, he's very interested and he's asking lots of questions. Um, yeah. It's very sweet. But, um, yeah, it's that finding that balance between preparing him for a baby and also preparing him for, again, what? What are we preparing him for? We don't yeah. know. So. It's the unknown, isn't it? And that's probably your your main concern and just the hope that you'll get to meet her and yeah, be able and to bring her home. As well. And yeah, there's, again, the added uncertainty of COVID. Then we've also been meeting with a specialist paediatrician in recent months. And he's also uh, made it clear that because our wish is for our son to meet our daughter, um, he will do his very best to make sure that even despite COVID regulations that he, they can meet and we really appreciate that um, mm. they're not making it difficult to understand the circumstances are um, very unusual so yes. it's been really comforting to know that yeah they, they understand our position on, on that. 
Yeah, that's really important. Have they have you made any other plans after for, for when she's here or have they discussed anything? Yesterday was also a good meeting with the hospital because we um put a draft together of uh, what's called a personal resuscitation plan, which sounds awful, but it's just a document that tells the hospital and anyone who deals with it with us in the future, whether it's the hospice or an ambulance team, that this is how we would like Hannah to be treated or not treated. <laughs> so yeah, we basically agreed on um, an, an intervention plan that's non-invasive. So okay. we'll give her whatever comfort and support she needs, but we will not be, you know, dragging her up, hooking up to life support machines and things like that. Because okay. we, we believe, yeah, when it's her time, it's her time. But that's been very helpful to to put that plan in place and then also the plan is to go from hospital to hospice um, and then come home if we feel confident to do that and if and when but they've all said nothing's written in stone and if things change or even if we come home and we're actually not coping we can come back to the hospice so it's been fantastic to know that we won't be yeah we'll held be on your decision. yeah and yeah. we won't be on our own exactly yeah, that's the most important thing because it will probably be quite overwhelming, especially as you mentioned, to keep your son involved as much as possible yeah. as well. And you want to make sure that he doesn't sort of feel left out or, you know, your all your attention is just on your daughter because yes. he'll also need your attention too. Exactly. Going forward, what, what sort of advice would you give other women who have conti- who've decided to continue their pregnancy? And if they've got similar concerns and fears that you've mentioned, what, what kind of advice would you give them to, to help them along their journey as well? Please the best advice would be to just take it one step at a time and just each appointment go to each appointment and not overthink the next step in the journey and what next because you may not get to the next step as awful as it is but just try and take it otherwise the whole situation will just overwhelm you and and it can just become unbearable so try and break it down into chunks Mm -hmm. and just take it one day at a time really and I suppose it depends on who you are but for us information and reading up and knowledge and research has really helped us to have a realistic view of the situation because there was one point in our care where we had an eight week gap between appointments and I think that kind of lulled me certainly into a bit of a false sense of security and I started romanticizing this baby a little bit and when we went back to the appointments they kind of just reminded us that it's quite a serious situation and they did it very caringly but it was just a reminder of this is not a a normal baby so and then you know I wasn't I was upset obviously (laughs) I I fully agreed with what they were telling me because I've done the research and I know the facts so um, obviously there's always that little bit of hope and that things might be different for us but I'd rather be realistic and happily surprised than be you know in denial about it and then it's a huge big shock when things don't go the way we thought they might. Yeah, definitely. You sound like you've got such a great mindset for this. I mean, you're super organized. And, you know, like you said, you can't, you don't know what to expect. So you're, you're pretty much prepared for any particular scenario. I mean, you you will never be as prepared as you'd like when it happens. But you've, you seem to have done all your homework and made sure that you've got everything ready for her when she comes. And that's really important. And I know you've um, spoken to other mums through Soft UK, um, so you know that there are stories where you know we we have got babies that have survived you know for a lot longer and yeah hopefully that gives you and um, your partner hope that th- this could be a, a channel for your baby as well yeah absolutely and being part of their Facebook group um, has helped a lot as well because uh, we've seen some of the stories you know good and bad or sad and also it's been a place where we can post questions and have really quick responses from real human beings not just you know reading the research on the averages and that so yeah it has been helpful to feel part of a community and we've done one or two zoom calls with yourself and some of the other parents and that's been very useful so yeah I think again if you're comfortable with it put yourself out there and join these groups it has helped us um, a lot as well good I'm glad to hear that thank you so much for for sharing your story I think it's going to be really helpful for other women and um, parents going forward so good luck with everything I can't wait thank to hear you. the good news thank you yeah I hope so <laughs>